anyways. All right. So moving on to the homework here. Um, I've got a couple of thoughts for the homework. Um, it is a reading and I, that does mean that I'm going to read it out loud for you. Um, so if you want to move on, um, and not listen to me read the reading, I am totally okay with that. Um, but also, I thought this was kind of cool. Um, so just like quickly about me, um, I am a science teacher in um, Denver, Colorado, but my background is um, physics um, and mathematics. Um, and so sometimes when I teach um, non-physics um, things, I'm always like so intrigued. Um, and so for me, as somebody who's really, really into physics, who doesn't have a lot of um, background in meteorology, when I saw the reading types of rain, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. I'm, I definitely like want to learn more about this. So I get it if you want to go and not listen to me read a reading. Um, but just think about all the information that you can gain. Um, and because also, um, I um, have been staying in Dallas, Texas, um, for the last week and it has been cold and rainy here and, and, and I've been thinking about, like, as I've been recording these videos, the different types of rain that we've experienced. So let's get reading. Um, we are going to read about some different types of rain. So what causes rain? Some rain forms when air parcels rise high into the troposphere and water vapor in the air condenses into liquid. However, that's not the whole story. The formation of rain can be more complicated than a single rising air parcel. One type of rain cord called Orographic rain can form when an air parcel runs into certain landforms on the Earth's surface. Another type of rain, called frontal rain, can form when air parcels of de different temperatures collide. So, orographic rain. That looks beautiful. Um, look at all that greenery. Um, Hilo, Hawaii is one of the rainiest places on Earth thanks to something called orographic rain. Have you guys been to Hawaii? I've never been to Hawaii. I would like to, maybe one day. Hilo, Hawaii is one of the wettest places on earth, receiving more than 100 inches of rain each year. However, just a few miles away from Hilo, on the same island, is a desert landscape that only gets about one-tenth as much precipitation as Hilo does. How is that possible? The answer has to do with the kind of rain called orographic rain. Hilo is located on the eastern side of Hawaii between the ocean and high mountain peaks. These landforms are an important factor in Hilo's weather. The wind almost always blows towards Hilo from the ocean, moving warm, humid air parcels in Hilo's direction. As the air parcels hit the land, they're forced upward by the mountains. The air parcels lose energy as they rise, and water vapor in the parcels condenses into liquid water, producing clouds and frequent rain. This type of rain is called orographic rain. Hawaii's mountains are also a factor in the, in the weather on the other side of the island, where there is a desert landscape. Because the clouds produce so much rain on the Hilo side of the mountains, there's very little water left in the air once it reaches the other side. The mountains block rain from reaching the other side. This is called a rain shadow, and it means there can be a desert just a few miles across the mountains from the wettest place on Earth. So, um, how rain shadow forms, warm, moist air, prevailing winds. That's what we've been, um, talking about how they push up, um, not prevailing winds, but we've been talking about winds. Um, then the rising air cools and condenses and then the dry air advances and it gets a rain shadow. So in Denver, this is actually something, um, that we experience a lot, um, that we, um, we don't see precipitation come up over the mountains because it loses its steam and it loses its energy as it's coming up. It still rains in Denver. Um, it still snows in Denver, but definitely not as much in the mount as in the mountains um, that are to the west of us. So when air parcels are forced upward by landforms such as mountains, they produce orographic rain on one side of the mountain. A dry area called a rain shadow forms on the other side. So then there's another type of rain that's called frontal rain. Wind is another factor that can contribute to rainfall. Winds can blow in all directions, moving air parcels around. Sometimes air parcels moving in different directions run into each other. A place where two air parcels meet is called a front, and fronts are places where dramatic weather tends to happen. Rain formed at fronts is called frontal rains. The place where two 
air parcels meet is called a front. Frontal rain forms when a mass of cold, heavy air moves under a mass of warm, light air and forces the warm air parcel upward. So why does so much wet weather happen at fronts? Frontal rain can form when a cold air parcel and a warm air parcel meet. The air in the cold parcel is denser and heavier than the air in the warm air parcels. When the parcels meet, the dense air of the cold front moves underneath the less dense air of the warm front, pushing the warm air up into the troposphere. From there, the story of the frontal rain is just like the other types of rain formation. The warm air cools as it rises, causing water vapor to condense and form droplets of liquid water. The droplets combine to form larger droplets. And when they get heavy enough, they fall as rain. So thinking about this, right? So you've got that cold air that's underneath, the warm air, the cold air actually makes it continue to rise, right? Because there's still gonna be that energy transfer of those two different parcels. So the warm parcel is gonna transfer energy to the cold parcel, which is gonna cause it to keep on um, rising up because there's that temperature change. And then um, all of the vapor um, that's in both of those air parcels because all air parcels um, contain water vapor, they're gonna start coming together and then it's gonna fall down with a lot, a lot of rain. So it leaves us with some questions to answer. So what type of rain do you think you normally experience? So for me, um, I think I, I experience more frontal rain than anything um, in Denver and then uh, in Dallas for sure. I know we, we experience way more um, frontal rain than, than um, anything. Um, and that's just because cold fronts and warm fronts, when they start um, coming together, you've got that warm air mass and that cold air mass. And um, so you're going to see rain like that. And then what is orographic rain and how does it happen? Okay, it happens because um, those air parcels start coming in. They hit a landform that causes it to have to go up. And because it has to rise up, we know that those air parcels cool. And that causes the water vapor within those air parcels to... Um, to condense and then fall as rain. Um, and then frontal rain, we talked about already when we have two, um, two air parcels coming in contact with them, the cold air goes underneath, okay? Because it's it's more dense. Um, for it to be more dense, that means um, it's got more matter, more particles, more parts in it um, and its volume, um, or it has a smaller volume with the same amount. but um, so they meet and it, the cold air causes the warm air to keep rising because there is temperature exchange. Um, so this warm air that's up here is giving its temperature to this cold air. Well, that cold air is then getting warmer. And so it's, it's kind of moving up there and then we get some rain. All right, guys, you're wonderful. You're amazing. Let's move on to 3.2.